Today, let's have a good look at the new Sober GX user interface. Hi folks, I'm Roger from Offgrid, and in this episode, we are gonna have a bit of a look at the Sober GX user interface, see what's new, how does it tie in with the Orion XS, that sort of thing. So let's dive in. I'll take you through the board uh, very briefly, the, the whole board, so that you know what we're feeding into there. So here is the Sober GX, the uh, two cables for the screen going off here to the, the, um, the monitor to the screen. And coming into the Serbo GX, we've got the smart shunt attached over here, which is coming in there. We've got the uh, smart solar controller, the MPPT controller coming into there. We've then got the Orion XS also on its own V direct uh, port. The, the previous versions of the Orions didn't have a uh, port for V direct, so this one has a V direct cable coming there. And then, of course, we have the Serbo GX, the uh, uh, MultiPlus rather, MultiPlus feeding in with, with a standard network cable. We also, in this particular instance, have attached a um, uh, temperature probe so we can see what the temperature thing is. Right, so that's all feeding into the servo, which, and here's the screen for the servo. So let's run through this. The, when, when you click on here, so as you can see this, the interface is very, very different to uh, what you might be used to. And it might not be your cup of tea or you might love it. So when you click on that, you see these little things line up here at the bottom. So there are a number of things that you can choose. So this is the brief, that's the overview, that's the levels, notifications, there are no alerts, and finally the settings where you can change all of the settings. So quite a nicely laid out menu and nicely laid out format on the screen, I think. So the whole UI is quite nice in my opinion. It, uh, it just depends whether you actually like this approach or not. The only thing that I don't like, if I could say this right from the start, is that there is no way that gives you everything on the one screen. So you, you either have to go to the brief, the overview, or if you want, you can then go to the levels. And here you've got environment on one side and tanks, and we don't have any tanks. So a completely different approach where you can't have it all on one screen or one user interface. But that might be something that you prefer. Uh, so let's go and run through this. So this is the brief view, as you can see, there it says brief. And basically you've got your battery storage and what's happening in the battery in the middle and then your inputs on the left and your outputs on the right. So that's quite logical. On the left, the top one is the, you know, sort of 11, 12 watts is what's coming off the grid. So this part is coming off the grid and this part here is coming off the solar panel. So it's a miserable day out there, it's raining like crazy and uh, currently we only have one watt coming off our panel that's sitting up there. So those are the inputs. The battery's at uh, 41%, 12.9 volts, and uh, it's 0.3 amps. And I think that is uh, coming into the battery, not going out. Of, if it's going out of the battery, I think it shows as a minus figure. Coming out, uh, we've got zero watts being drawn through the multiplus, so nothing is actually attached to it at the moment. Uh, but the uh, the DC, there's five watts coming out to the uh, DC outputs, and that four or five watts would be basically everything required to drive the whole board, so to actually run the electrics of the board, run the Serbo GX, uh, run the Orion XS, that sort of thing. So quite a nice, and you can see at a glance pretty much how it's doing, as you can see these slide up and down depending on what they're doing. So. It's quite handy. You can see the state of everything other than your tanks or your temperature levels. You can see just at a glance. The time, the time on this is a tiny little thing. I would have liked to have seen that a bit, bit bigger. I, I don't see the point in having it so tiny like that at, at the top there. And the only way you see that time there is with some specs. So if this is where you go to is to see the time. It would be nice. They've got so much space that they could have made it a nice big font here. So that's the uh, the brief overview, now if we look with the brief uh, UI, if we go to the overview now, you'll see immediately it's the same sort of approach where you've got your inputs on the left and your outputs on the right, and then the state of the inverter charger, the multiplus, and then the state of the battery in the middle. That's quite handy. 
what you can see here straight away is you've got your grid, the alternator, and your solar yield. So it's showing all three. Previously on the brief screen, it didn't show the alternator. And that, actually not sure if that's because it's zero watts coming in because it's, there's nothing happening there. Be good to wire something up to see what that is. But basically your grid is an 11 watts, nothing coming from the alternator. You could say because the vehicle's not actually running and the solar is sort of one watt or so, so hardly anything coming from there. So that's the inverter charger with the multiplus is in bulk charging mode, as you can see there, with uh, the battery levels below there and then your output similar to the other screen. What's quite nice with this is you can click on that and that pops you over to a screen, almost like a setting screen, where you can change the mode. So for example, you can click on that and that you can change from on to charger only, inverter only or off. We've never seen the need for the middle two, so basically it would either be on or off. So it's quite nice that you can do that. You can also set your, your grid current limit on this, so if you click on that, uh, you can choose from these presets, so it's really quick and easy, so th 3 amp, 6 amp, 10 amp, etc. Or you can actually increase or decrease it here, and I think, can you actually, no, you can't actually press on that and type it over. So you have to use the plus and minuses or use those. So that's quite handy for a very quick way of setting your grid current limit. And for those who don't know, one of the really nice things about the MultiPlus is that you can set a grid current limit. So let's say you're on a dodgy campsite with uh, three splitters on the bollard already. You don't want to overload things for obvious reasons. You could go, you know, in this case, as low as three amps, which is a very low draw. So just basically trickle charging your battery. Uh, and as you need more power, the MultiPlus will then draw from the battery as well. So quite a, quite a handy thing. The most common is to set it at six amps. There are a number of sites that have MCBs that are rated at six amps for each pitch. So quite easy to do that here. You could, if you wanted to go to say six amps and then say, well, I actually want to go um, down, say, down to five amps just so because it might be tripping at six amps or something like that. So you can do that. Because we are running this uh, through the multi, the, the big multi plus, we've gone to three amps just to basically trickle the battery. So you can set, set that and close it. And there are various other things that you can see. And uh, I don't think you can actually change anything else. It's just these top two things that you can change. So quite handy to change that on the battery. There's not, not much that you can set. You can just see a whole lot of uh, detail. Maybe on the device you can set some things there, change the name, etc. But it's quite handy that on this user interface, when you click on something, invariably there is something that you can do with that. So I'm not sure about there. So that does show us uh, various things to do with the, the solar controller. It is really exciting to see the alternator being incorporated, uh, or let's say the, the Orion XS being incorporated, they call it just alternator, so being incorporated into the Serbo GX as a specific item. So when we click on that, let's see what that shows us. So firstly, it's showing us the alternator is 12.9 uh, volts, zero amps, so nothing coming from there, that's what we expected. Uh, in terms of the alarms, there are no alarms in our, in our case history. There's no history on this either because we've just dis we disconnected everything and then put it all back in. And on the device, it shows a number of things and you can change stuff like the name and things like that. So really, really exciting to see that here. And that gives us the ability to tell us exactly what is actually happening with the alternator. Can't click on, on anything else. One of the things that I was interested to know was, is it possible in this to actually set the limits. Interestingly, we can't set the limits that I can see anywhere here. So you'd ha actually have to Bluetooth onto the device itself to set the current limits. It would have been nice if you could do this from here, but uh, for some reason they haven't in incorporated that yet. Let's hope that they do that in the future. It would just make sense to me. In closing, uh, I quite like this interface, even though you don't see every absolutely everything that you want to on one interface. It's quite handy to have this arrangement where everything on the left is inputs, everything on the right is outputs, and in the middle is the state of the battery and then inverted charger, that sort of thing. It would have been 
pretty good if there was an option to have everything on one screen. So uh, move the stuff up a little bit and maybe have some of the levels shown there, which is what I currently have on my, my Serbo GX on, on my GX touch screen in my own motorhome. So with this, you'd have to literally go to your levels, see things, and then come back to whichever interface you want to use. Not, not too bad, it just means that you can't just walk past at a glance, see everything that you want or need to see. You have to move around a little bit in the menus and then come back. But on the whole, really pleased with it. It's not those sort of glaring colors that they had before. We kind of got used to those, but now that we're used to this one, I don't think I could go back to that very blingy, colory screen that we used to have. It's just personal preference. Maybe you love those colors, that's fine. I prefer this more of a sort of a retro look. Uh, it fits in, I think, with a lot of the modern motorhomes. If you look at, you know, say, death lefts, for example, and, and imagine those uh, that control panel that sits above the door, this is far more in keeping with that. So it was a bit of a clash and a contrast with the old Serbo, where you'd have this nice, beautiful, almost retro control panel on a death lefts, and then next to it, if you had a Serbo GX, it with these glaring colors and, and quite a glarish, blingy type of screen, really. Uh, this is far more in keeping with that, just my opinion. You may differ. Folks, hopefully that is useful to you. If you have a Serbo GX, uh, go on and play around. You can re revert back to your previous uh, firmware if you want to. It's really, really easy. And so there's no, there's no real danger of trying this, to, going to the update and, and installing the update and then playing around with the two versions of the UI. If you have GUI mods, it works fine with this. So you can actually still run your GUI mods, not on this particular uh, UI, you would need to run it on the more traditional screen, uh, on what they call the standard screen. Um, but yeah, you, you can do that. So don't, don't be afraid. If you have GUI mods, you should be fine to install the latest firmware and have a good look at the screens. So let us know what you think of the screens. So see you in the next episode. Cheers.